Tired of dealing with annoying flies, fruit flies, and gnats in your home? The Zevo Flying Insect Trap is your ultimate solution. Don't wait. Check out the link in the video description now to get your Zevo Flying Insect Trap on Amazon and enjoy a bug-free home today. Hanging in the front room of Peggy Gallagher's three-bed semi in Benage, South Manchester, is a black and white photograph of three young boys with their mother. Two of them, aged just two and seven, are instantly recognizable, with their raffish eyebrows, bowl-cut hair, and mischievous grins. For 15 long years, Peggy, now 81, has kept the portrait in pride of place, praying that these two boys, who once shared a bedroom, might come together again. It has been a decade and a half since Oasis, the band that propelled Gallagher brothers Liam and Noel to global superstardom, announced their shock breakup, fueled by a long-running rift that both sides swore would never heal. And while last week's news of their reunion sent fans into a frenzy, no one has been quite as moved as Peggy. Those who know the proud Irishwoman say she is thrilled her sons have finally put the past behind them, something she has been urging them to do for years. In fact, it's said that the seeds of this reunion may well have been sown last year, during a mother and son spa break at Cliveden House in Berkshire, bought by Liam for Peggy's 80th birthday. Aware that she wasn't getting any younger, she said to have pleaded with her youngest son to patch things up with his brother before it was too late. Peggy's words, it seems, finally hit home. For the Oasis story, that of the Manchester Council estate lads who formed one of the biggest rock and roll bands in the world, who were famed for their drunken brawls, the trashed hotel rooms, airline bands, and years of badmouthing not only each other but any other Britpop rival, isn't just about Liam, 51, and Noel, 57. Rather, it's a tale of a mother's heartache, of broken Christmases and birthdays spent apart, of never being allowed to see her beloved grandchildren together in one room. Peggy was the peacemaker, says musician Matt Dayton, who stood in for Noel for three months in 2000 when he quit the band during a tour, speaking exclusively to the mail last week. Mothers like her, he adds, keep people down to earth. And there are few in the brothers' orbit more down to earth than Peggy Gallagher, nay Sweeney, whose hometown of Charlestown, County Mayo, was in raptures this week as locals shared her joy that her boys were back together. John Finnan, who runs J.J. Finnan's pub on the town square and knew Peggy's late mother, Margaret, describes Liam and Noel, without a hint of irony, as gentlemen. We're delighted, everyone in the west of Ireland is, he says. But none is more delighted than Peggy. John, now in his 80s, remembers the young boys, who grew up in Manchester, coming to Ireland for summer holidays. The same picture that hangs in the Gallagher house can be found above the fireplace in his pub. Very nice, respectable young men. I couldn't fault them, he says of Liam and Noel, a sentiment probably not shared by legions of flight attendants and hotel housekeepers. I hope they'll drop in and give us a tune next summer if they're passing. Chances are high, the Gallagher family still owns a holiday home outside Charlestown, and it was nearby, at Granny Margaret's house in Sonic, that they spent countless summers in their youth, crammed into a tiny cottage with their cousins. Immersing her English sons and her Irish heritage has always mattered to Peggy, the Charlestown postmaster, tells the mail. She wanted them to know the turf and the land and everything that goes with it, he says. Peggy Sweeney never forgot her roots. Speaking in 1996, Peggy described her very poor upbringing. She was one of 11 children born to William, a laborer, and Margaret. We never had shoes or socks. At night, the girls slept six to a bed, three at the bottom, three at the top. Things didn't improve when my father left home, he just disappeared, never said goodbye or anything. To support her mother, who had a weak heart and was often ill, Peggy left school at 13 and got her first job, working in a grocery store and pub, doing 14-hour shifts for one pound a week. In the years that followed, young Peggy would scrub floors, cook, clean, dust, anything to keep the family afloat. When she was 18, she decided enough was enough. As she told Ireland's The Late Late Show in 1996, I went to England. There was nothing else for me. Plus, there were too many at home, I had to move. With her mother's blessing, she settled in Manchester W.